Hello everyone, this is Cass from Conscious Explorers and I wanted to share an experience I had with you yesterday. I took a fairly a heroic dose of DMT in my dreams because DMT is illegal and I would never do anything illegal. Um, and I got some information that I didn't really like and kind of went against some of the things that I was even saying in my previous video. In some ways they go against it, maybe maybe not actually with further thought, but at the time I was like this definitely contradicts some stuff. Um, and I'm trying to work out whether my brain just made up this whole conversation because I was in some hallucination or whether there's any truth to what was said. So I thought I'd share this with you. Um, one thing I'd say is that I've taken DMT a lot of times uh, over, you know, over the last 20 years. Um, uh, in my dreams and um, my battery's running out there and um, birds are so noisy I always seem to do videos with noisy birds um, it's the DMT elves they don't want me to be sharing this information with you um, yeah so I'm pretty lucid when I go into that space I'm pretty conscious and I decided to ask some questions. And so this is what they told me. They told me that we are being observed. There's a whole society of these DMT people, whoever they are. They've created this digital simulation for us to go into where we are um, just put in all kinds of difficult, complicated situations and we are observed to how we react. And the purpose of this is twofold. One is to see whether we can reach a certain level of evolution and if we can, I, I'm guessing that might give us a rites of passage to somewhere else. But secondly, they're just observing to learn as well. You know, how, how we respond to things may teach them something. Um, which I didn't like the sound of, it makes me feel like I'm some sort of like, I don't know, bacteria in a petri dish that's being studied. That didn't seem very nice. So I asked them some questions about this. I said, uh, is Anthony Peake's model of the fact that we relive our life over and over and over again correct? They didn't want to answer that. I said, is anybody else in the simulation actually real? Does it matter? Do I, you know, it, it, I, I want to help people and it's, I've always been very driven by, by helping people and sharing information that we can all benefit from, or at least I hope we can. Is there any point in me doing that? Because you know, sometimes it's quite a lot of work, and I'd rather not bother. They wouldn't. They didn't want to answer that. <laughs> um, although I, I, I do love sharing information and, and having a discussion. But sometimes I do get, you know, get a real thought like, oh, you should share this, and I, I think, oh, I can't be asked to make a video about this. And I, and then I think, no, no, it will be. It might be helpful. I'm going on a tangent, sorry. Anyway, back to the back to the thing. Um, what else did I ask them? Is anyone else real? Yeah, they didn't want to answer that. Um, what else? Uh, can I trump the simulation? Can I can I evolve beyond it? Well, they said you can get to a certain level where potentially you can change things, but they they're kind of not interested in that. Like they don't really want you to be. They don't want you to sit and meditate too much and connect to source, really. They want to see how, how you respond and react to other people. And I got the impression that it was very much about like kind, kindness, you know? So here we are, we're going to give you a backache, we're going to give you money problems, we're going to give you a pandemic, um, and, and here's someone coming along and hitting your car. How are you responding to that? Are you going to shout at them? How are you going to deal with it? How's your interaction going to be? How are you going to react? And it seemed very much that they were very interested in your reactions towards others and towards situations. They did not particularly want us to be woke. <laughs> woke. God, I hate that word. Woke to um, to what uh, what was really going on. And uh, yeah, at least in their, in their eyes, they weren't really interested in, in us getting into a place where we kind of transcend and we can manifest the perfect life where everything's wonderful, because that way we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be able to see how we respond. So yeah, I came back. Um, oh, did 
I mention I asked them if anyone else was real? I can't remember if I, if I said that now, but they didn't, want, they didn't want us to know that either. I don't know whether we're all different beings in one simulation or whether we each have our own little simulation somehow. Um, and it's just, you know, we're like the character in the program. The rest are, are just like programmed characters. Um, uh, yeah, so I came back wondering, you know, my thoughts about connecting to Source. Does that, is Source kind of above this? I think, yes, you can still meditate, connect to the oneness of everything. These guys are below that, if you like. Did they set this up? I, I, at first I thought, yeah, they did, but maybe they didn't. Maybe they just got in on it, you know, just because this is happening didn't mean they set up. They could just be watching us here, but they're watching us, they are. Um, that's why they don't like people coming back and back and back and prodding too much in DMT space, because they don't want you to know what's going on. They also gave me the sense that I'd, like a naughty school kid that's redoing the year a million times, that by now, you know, I should have got this by now. <laughs> and here I am again. Um, because I, I haven't got it yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, what else should I say about it? I, I, I took another big dose in my dreams and, um, and, uh, and, and normally what happens is, is as time slows down, all the aches and pains in my body melt away. I absolutely just love it. I feel so nice and relaxed. And then there's all these kind of colorful, visuals and things that look like toys and memories of my past that aren't really depicted obviously but I can see that they're, they're sort of trying to make sense of it and I'm getting insights about like the way I live and so all that kind of happened and then normally what happens is uh, my body starts going into some like convulsions it starts reliving particular traumas one of a motorbike accident and some of my childhood and it literally starts convulsing so I went into a bollard on my motorbike and I hit my jaw like this see I'm missing some teeth and bashed my knee and I my body went in that motion and every time I take DMT or ayahuasca or any kind of other psychedelic in my dreams um, my body starts doing that and I was like I'm so done with this can I just let this go now I've had enough of it can I just rewrite the program I never had the motorbike accident I never had this other trauma stuff going on and you know I thought I'm gonna tell them who's boss here like, I'm not having this <laughs> and I managed to stop that and believe me it was hard I always thought I was just surrendering to the convulsions and I could stop them and I could stop them by getting up but if I didn't get up, I couldn't stop them. I didn't realise how strong they were. So I managed to stop them. I then came out, took another heroic dose. <laughs> and, uh, and it was very dark and everything started to look quite demonic. And I thought, I'm not having this either. I think this was about the fifth time in. Um, and generally, the more times you do this, there's diminishing returns. It doesn't work as effectively. <sighs> But this time was weird, and I don't want to, you know, put some supernatural element in this that doesn't belong. But, you know, it didn't seem to diminish. And the other weird thing was that was the fourth time I did it, my lighter was just run out of gas. So I had to stop it at, at some point. I'd already kind of got there. And then after that, I was like, no, I want to come back and I want to have one more conversation with you guys. And I did it again. And this time the lighter was just full power. It was just totally I don't know where it came from but anyway so the fifth time I went in was the time when everything started looking a bit demonic the light was very very dark and I, I was like I'm not having this I'm not having this <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be in control of this and I got the sense that they quite liked my um, my dominant attitude in fact that that normally you know it's all about surrender 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 um, but this time I did not want to surrender I was like, listen guys, if I'm on here, I, okay, I get it, I forgive everyone, I'm gonna be nice to everybody, I get it, I want, if I'm gonna live this life, I want a really nice quality of life. If you're, if you're making the code, I want luxury. <laughs> so I've suffered enough, I have suffered a lot, trust me. Like, I know it's in here, but I really have. And I'm so over that now. I want a luxurious life for me and Laura, and I wanna enjoy it. 
Um, and they, they seemed quite, um, <laughs> they seemed all right about that. They seemed quite like me kind of taking control of the situation. So who knows if that's going to happen. I know this sounds all kind of really crazy and out there and, you know, most people will probably watch it and just be like, oh, she just took drugs and got high um, in her dreams. Um, who knows? Perhaps that is what has happened. Or maybe there is some truth to it. But here I am on the eternal quest <laughs> to explore the mysteries of life and share my thoughts with you. I'm sure they're always going to be changed and updated. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you don't go in, you don't find out, right? And I'm sure that maybe none of it matters, but it's good fun. It's good fun exploring. If you've listened this far, you're a legend. Thank you so much. Have a great day.